a certain spice to everything, right? Uh, waitressing actually turned out to be quite wild. Uh, phone sex operator for eight years, that worked out just fine. And uh, a nude art model, that's what I started doing two years ago in Berlin. Um, just a little side hustle when I first landed, I needed to get some groceries. Um, all of these jobs also share with them the fact that I was terrified the whole time. Or at least the beginning. I was terrified at the beginning. When I first started these jobs, I would just rock up and be shaking on the inside. Um, with new modeling, um, this lasted for two weeks beforehand. I never vomit when I'm nervous, except for two weeks I felt like throwing up on every street in Berlin. It was terrifying. But when I got there, because groceries have to happen, when I got there uh, and felt the intensity of the artist like getting into a body that never gets seen in the art studio. It rarely, rarely gets seen, right? Uh, and the, the, the the keenness and the sharpness of their focus, and they were just no sound, just going at it. It's a sound that I learned uh, meant that they were loving it. The sound of charcoal against paper. Eight or nine people, <laughs> they were busy. There's a lot to get down on the paper, right? So over the first year of doing life modeling, I, I, what, maybe I got a little cocky, maybe that's what happened? Because I started getting invitations from people who I didn't know who said, I saw your picture in someone's art book. Ooh, I heard that you're a life model and you're good. And I started, you know, not like showing off a bit, but you know, I was starting to get requests. I was getting head hunted or naked ass hunted, uh, you know, <laughs> for like nude modeling. And it was exciting. Um, until the, until the, uh, about a year in, I got an invitation to a drink and draw session, which is a little more casual. These are not like striving artists, they're just having a drink and goofing around. And uh, I don't think the facilitator, facilitator told them what was coming. Um, I don't think that they understood at all what was going on because they walked into the room, which was half the size of this room, um, and uh, there's 20 of them. And I was in the, oh, maybe it's the same size, 20 of them all around in a circle getting into their chairs, and I was standing there in the middle of the room with my robe on, and they were looking at me like, what are you doing here? What's your role here? What's your function? They didn't understand. And then the facilitator said, okay, let's get started. I dropped my robe, and the oxygen left the room. I could feel it. If you've ever been like presenting something, and suddenly the whole room just like disengages all at once, <laughs> the oxygen fled. And I suddenly after a year of being appreciated and admired for my body for the first time in a long time, I was suddenly in a room full of 20-something hipsters in Neukölln in Berlin who were looking at me like they had never seen a fat person in their life. And so, I mean, they're just they're 25 year old hipsters, of course they have it, it's Berlin, they're all so fucking out of their head at raves, they don't, they don't, they don't <laughs> see fat people there. <laughs> and they certainly had never seen a naked fat person. And, uh, I felt that shame. I kept going through the poses because I'm a professional. And um, then, while they were struggling and staring and whispering, I realized that um, actually they were more afraid of me than I was of them. For some reason, I represented mortality or death or some shit in the future. I'm 48, they're 25. Okay? And that marked the, the moment when I recaptured my anger as a fat person. And uh, I used to be political. I gave it up for performance, and now I'm taking it back again. So uh, that was the moment that I came back to my politics as a fat person. I just wanted to share that with you. It's a little bit about what my show is uh, touches on. Uh, Muse, in particular, is about uh, my work in life modeling, contrasted with my experience as a fat person out on the streets. You can draw if you want to. I have art supplies there, and uh, I answer questions. You can ask questions and talk. If you've ever done uh, life drawing, you know that that's never done. Well, this is it. It's a relaxed life drawing session, and you get to look at my fat ass for an hour and a half. So I have flyers for that and my two other shows out there at the door. Um, we've got to go. Things are happening. I'm going to hand it back over to Carmina. Thank you so much. Woo! Woo! Thank you.